I'm so honored to introduce Lamia el Khoury. She is a professor and the Dean of Faculty of Archaeology and Anthropology at Yarmouk University in Irbid, Jordan. With a PhD in Classical and Near Eastern Archaeology from the University of Mannheim in Germany, she was the first to investigate Nabataean arts, including stone sculptures and terracotta figurines in depth specifically their production methods, visual attributes, and use in Nabataean religion. Her work is wide-ranging in date and subject matter, centered in recent years in Northern Jordan. Please welcome Lamia. Hello, everyone, and um, thank you very much for the uh, Cincinnati Museum team and um, for the invitation to um, present my lecture here today. Um, actually, um, I don't, I cannot uh, start, but I will complete what Dr. Uh, Jorn had started. And um, I think uh, many points uh, we are together or we, um, we match uh, these points. Um, uh, my lecture today is uh, about the identity of Nabatin sculptural art. So um, a uh, comparative uh, study with sculptures from uh, other since uh, a coincidence uh, culture. Um, the Nabatean kingdom was flourished in the uh, southern part of the Levant and northern part of Arabia uh, around the first century BC and the first century or also uh, part of the second century AD. Uh, the Nabataean kingdom extended in the uh, prosperous period to cover a wide geographical area, including parts of northern Arabia, Negev, and uh, parts of southern Syria. Petra was their capital city, and it is located in South Jordan and known for its wonderful rock-cut facades. Many of its architectural remains are still unexcavated. Most popular and obvious are the rock cut facades that show a very impressive work of stone carving in the city. The Nabataeans, the Nabataeans was a major commercial power and the destination of many of the Arabian caravans. This map is showing the major trade routes in the region the incense trade route in green that links India and China through southern Arabia with the shores of the Mediterranean, the silk trade route in pink that links China through the region of Mesopotamia with the shores of the Mediterranean, in blue are other important subways, branches of the main routes. The geographical location of the Nabataean kingdom was a reason of their wealth and prosperity. The kingdom has been influenced by the movements of trade over its territory. The Nabataeans monopolized the inland incense route which passed through their kingdom and extended to the Persian Gulf, Southern Arabia, Egypt, and the Eastern Mediterranean. The Nabataeans expanded their commercial relations and activities in the regions bordering the Mediterranean basin. Remote and long distance trade played an integral role in the diffusion of other cultures in Nabataea. It had direct and remarkable impact of the Nabataean art, among others is cultural art. Nabataean sculptures are often powerful expressions of interest, cultural and religious influences, drawing upon Hellenistic, Roman, Arabian, Syrian, Mesopotamian, and Persian traditions. This presentation will be focusing on similarities and maybe differences also between the Nabataean stone sculptures and other sculptures belonging to other cultures. The similarities are either in subjects or in the art style. When talking about the art of any of the local cultures in the region, there are some aspects that must be taken into consideration. The inhabitants of the region had far more in common with another. 
Those inhabitants belong to local cultures, the Nabataean, the Persian, Parthians in particular, the Syrians, the Palmyrian, and the Eudian. They worked along the same trade routes. They traveled to one another cities. They handled the same products. They worshiped images of their local and regional gods. They spoke a variety of related Semitic languages as well as Greek. In addition to the Greco-Roman pantheon that was adopted by the local cultures and the Nabataeans in particular, and appeared obviously in Petra and the other Nabataean sites, the images of gods and goddesses that are produced in the Nabataean Petra were also very similar and can be easily compared to the original Greco-Roman ones. Examples of those are numerous. And here are two examples. On the upper row is Dionysus, the fertility god, whose images are frequent in Nabataean word, in the Nabataean word and depicted on the same way as it has been made in the Greek world. It has been sculpted in the same classical Hellenistic traditions with the realistic anatomy, expressive movements, and ornate details. And the lower row is Helios, the sun god, also found in Petra and can be easily compared with the Greek similar depictions of the same god. Those types make it safe to suggest that, that the sculptors who made this type of or style of sculptures were educated or practiced by the Nabataean or Roman sculptors. If sculptor is of Roman or Greek or, Ro or, uh, or Nabataean origin is, is unknown. One thing must be taken into consideration when discussing the Greco-Roman influence, and that is there are a number of imported marble statues in Petra, imported from the Greek world, either Greece, Turkey, or the Greek islands of the Mediterranean. Those had an impact on the Nabataean sculptures that were made of local sand or limestone. This is also familiar and the terracotta figurines as well. First pieces were imported. Later pieces were locally made. The Nabataeans were also fascinated by some types which belong to early phase of the, sorry, uh, of the early phase, um, uh, which belong to the early phase of the Greek classical period sculptures, particularly the fifth and fourth centuries, uh, century pieces. A good example of this is the male head also found in Petra on the, on the right hand with some similar characters of the god Hermes with his curly hair styled in a regular way, so in the middle. Uh, the similar features, especially of the curly hair that appeared on the Greek sculpture, originated from the East and re remind us of the early stages of the Greek sculptures uh, or sculpture production of the archaic and the early classical periods. Those were influenced by the Mesopotamian art, as we see in this slide, so on, on, the, on the left hand the two um, pictures, especially in depiction of the, of the hairstyle. Away from the Greco-Roman style is another style completely different, originated from southern Arabia. Arabia at that time was an open peninsula at the crossroads of trade, as I mentioned before, in the centuries before Alexander the Great the Nabataeans moved from northwest of Arabia, of Arabian Peninsula, as they shared several deities with the ancient people there. In terms of religious significance, important sculptures of the Nabataean kingdom were often idols and iconic uh, beitils. They are sacred stones, present gods, 
Many of them indicate the link of southwestern Arabia and Nabataean art. So the, the, um, the left side are, uh, and the middle are uh, from South Arabia, Yemen, and um, the two uh, pictures on the right are from uh, Petra. The Nabatean sculptors produced hundreds of geometric idols. These played a significant, uh, significant role in the patterns of uh, worship by the Nabateans. They vary in the details and manner in which facial features are represented. Some are plain rectangular blocks, others depict an abstract face with carved eyes, a long nose, and a small fleshy mouth, or even geometrical or red features. As we can see in the examples, similarities are very obvious to some pieces found in South Arabia. But despite the similarities with pre-Islamic Arabian idols, Nabataean idols show many differences in styles, numbers, sizes, facial features, and diversity. The Nabateans show clearly their own style, either carved on the rock or in three-dimensional stone blocks by adding and or combing the features together. And these are all from Petra. To the northeast of the Nabataean region is the Parthian culture. The Parthians were controlling the uh, lucrative east-west Silk Road through the Euphrates and Tigris rivers area. Parthian art would in include the motif of frontality, making personal uh, connections between themselves and the viewer. On the other side, Greek and Roman sculptures look away from the viewer, gazing at someone or something else. Similarities between the Parthian sculptures and the Nabataean sculptures can be seen stronger on the sculptures that were found outside Petra in particular the two main sites of Etanur and Idarih. They are about 60 miles north of, Pet of Petra. An example that shows similarities in the subject as well as in the way of depicting the human images is the diving couple Qos uh, Dushara, and probably Atargatis Allat, uh, that was found in the temple of Etanur the storm god Qos Dushara is modeled in the full bearded image of Zeus Hadad flanked by two balls. He holds the thunderbolt symbol in his left hand and raised his right arm. On his left side is the surviving part of the goddess Atargatis Allat, sculpture flanked by two lions originally. Only one lion survived. This relief of diving couples corresponds closely to the enthroned Hadad and Atargatis from Dura Europos on the left side. There might be differences in the style and some features, but the subject is completely the same. The Palmyrene and the Nabataeans were both local cultures in the region that were influenced by both the Greco-Roman and the Persian Parthian cultures. The Palmyrene are best known for their funerary portraits more than any other kind of sculptures. Those were busts, bust reliefs in frontal representation. Each relief sealed the opening of the depicted person's burial chamber. Those were unique in the region and other Palmyrene reliefs can be shared uh, uh, can, can we share uh, certain features and characteristics with the Nabataean ones? Like those examples, similarities can be shown on the hairstyle, the facial features, and some, uh, sometimes the dress. A number of female heads uh, would show um, would show similarities in some features, the Palmyrene head on the left and the Parthian heads in the middle and the Nabataean heads 
on the uh, right side. So they are, these are male, not female. Uh, the hairstyle, beards, and perhaps frontal depiction are, show some sim similarities. Uh, similarities would appear on uh, other reliefs of the goddess uh, Atargates a lot. On the left uh, side is the Palmarine Atar Atargates. Uh, in the middle is the Parthian, and in the left is uh, is the or in the right is the is the um, uh, Nabatian ones from uh, Khirbet al Tanur. Uh, all were depicted in the local style of each culture. While Atargates was the chief goddess of the north, Syria, uh, and um, equated with the Alat of southern Arabia, and worshipped also uh, by the Nabateans. The goddess Taiki um, on the left side is the Greek Taiki depicted in the natural, realistic Greek uh, classical style. On the upper middle is the Parthian Taiki. On the lower middle is the Nabatine Taiki. And on the left are the uh, Palmeran Taiki. The goddess Nike, from left to right, the Greek Nike on the left, then the Palmerine Nike, the Nabatian Nike from Darih and the Nabatian Nike from Khirbet uh, al Tanur to the right. As it has been mentioned before, the uh, Nabatians had a wide range of influences when it came to sculptural art. But at the same time, they had their own identity in modeling their own styles and sculptural images. They displayed their own unique artistic tastes, especially outside Petra at Khirbet Tanur and Khirbet Darih in particular, architectural stone statues decorating the temple facades and altar walls are uh, again a testament to Nabatine artistic choice and creativity. The Nabatean artists have developed local traditions that are shown on their sculptures. These characteristics of their own style are found especially in facial features, semicircular, large protruding eyes, large noses, round chins. These new characteristics in evolved into what is so-called Nabatean style or a local school of art, the deep carved lines, the large eyes, the curly hair style, the full cheeks, the small chin, the small fleshy mouth, all those features is carved in a local Nabatian style. The similarities between the Tanur and the Darih make it safe to say that both group of sculptures were made by sculptors belong to, local, to a local school of art. Finally, and as Nelson Gluck stated many years ago, as merchants, as merchants extraordinary, their affairs and interests were cosmopolitan in scope and they could easily have become completely imitative in culture, that under the pressure of all these circumstances, they were able to retain and furthermore sharpen their distinctive identity is little short of a miracle. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>